Um, hi again. Um, part four of this week's content, uh, the final part, is um, I'm just going to sketch out another couple of figures that happen within youth studies um, and then uh, give you a quick example about why these different figures may be a problem within youth studies um, and, and conclude. So within youth studies, I think there's, um, there are some um, figures that are being created by um, youth studies practitioners. Um, so certainly there's a generations perspective. This is associated with the names of Wooden, Winman, uh, Wynne and Woodman and others. Um, the generations perspective is to kind of highlight that young people are born into very different social conditions, economic conditions, cultural conditions, and we need to consider those things when we look at the wider uh, the problems that they face. Um, it, this is influenced by the work of um, Furlong and Cartmore that I've spoken about previously, where you know the, the work of Beck and Giddens and others have kind of showed us that there's been processes of individualization, detraditionalization, um, and individualization and reflexivity, sorry, that have seen young people being forced to face um, you know, labor market conditions and things like that as individuals much more than previous generations. And this um, is quite problematic. There's another kind of version uh, uh, promoted by James Cote, um, who I've been in um, some debates with recently, who argues we should maybe think of youth as a class, as a kind of wholesome um, kind of group of the population, to consider this from a political economy perspective. And he very um, successfully shows how young people are being increasingly disadvantaged as opposed to previous generations. There's now a pattern emerging where new generations seem to be more impoverished, have less opportunities, um, have more social problems and mental health issues than, than previous generations. And by using youth as a, in that kind of figurative way, we can um, understand the power relations and the political economy of that. On the other side, we have the, the very creation of actual figures of youth by some youth researchers. A really excellent version of this is um, Anita Harris's kind of now canonical work about um, the, the can-do and the at-risk girl, um, who kind of highlights how um, there's a dichotomy with how young women presented and, and, and kind of used as um, examples in the mainstream media. There's the can-do girl, the kind of tend to be well-educated, upper-class, um, middle-class kind of achiever, and then there's the at-risk girl, which tends to be a more working-class, you know, risky subject. Howie and Campbell have sketched out the gorilla self. Um, in my own work, I've used the figures of the hipster and bogan to think about how class um, is used um, as a way of... Uh, how class economies operate um, and how youth, youth cultures in particular are embedded in those um, relations of class. And Akane Kanai has kind of used... Uh, created her own figures to think about how young women relate to each other on things like Tumblr. Um, and she did some analysis of blogs about, you know, how the, the, the figure of the best friend, the boyfriend, the hot guy and creeps is kind of used um, as a way of um, communicating with each other and how they're embedded in various uh, class, ethnic and gendered um, discursive problems as well. So again, I just wanted to quick, quickly touch on, on those. There'll be um, uh, readings about those um, in the course guide that you can draw upon and, and have a look at to, to get to um, a better understanding of how figures can be used within people's research projects to help us understand what's going on. So an example, I think, of what why this is an issue and why I think we need to think about these kind of figurative things is a, a debate that I've been involved in in the Journal of View Studies. Um, so what I think happens, you know, with, uh, you know, reflecting on this a little bit, is that I think what ends up happening is because different researchers use such different figures of youth, they end up talking past each other. So to begin with, James Cote argued for a political economy perspective to return to youth studies. And he starts talking about how young people have a false consciousness. Now he observes this um, in different readings of, of other research and his own research. Now I don't really particularly like the notion of false consciousness. I don't think it's very useful. So my, myself and Alan France respond, arguing that this doesn't really resonate with the young people that we do research with. Again, see, you can see the difference here between observes and with, where we're maybe drawing and creating different figures of youth in our research, and we advocate a uh, Borgesian kind of notion of social struggle there. 
then two other prominent researchers respond, Sukaroy and Tanak, and argue kind of a position somewhere in between. Now, I think um, I think uh, that what this means is that the three participants in this debate may well have quite different conceptions of what they actually mean by a young person. Um, Cody seems to be drawing upon the cultural dupe and the at-risk version that I sketched out earlier on. Um, Alan France and myself kind of sketch out this kind of you know, youth person as a kind of figure of struggle. Um, and Sukhari Tanok, in their own work, as I kind of pointed out earlier, earlier on as well, draw upon an array of different figures in their own work to kind of explain what's going on in terms of the political economy of youth. And so I would say that um, I think youth studies researchers need to be increasingly cognizant of the different figures that they're using um, in their work. Otherwise, um, we may end up being talking past, talking past each other. So to conclude, I think a figurative method allows us to kind of uncover and then maybe even help solve some of these problems um, and, but, and also highlight the ways that youth is, fig is used as a figure and therefore configured in really different ways across multiple sites from media, pop culture, news and opinion, um, in different disciplinary regimes from you know, sociology, psychology, education, whatever, um, and that within youth studies itself, there's different figures being drawn upon. Um, so I've sketched out a kind of a, compl a kind of a, a complex assemblage of some of these figures, and I think these have real um, need to be taken into account to consider what youth actually means. Now, within the figures that I've sketched out, I've obviously stuck to a quite Western picture here, and I think there could be a whole lot of other figures that I've missed, and I would, I'm, I'm actually um, in my paper encouraging um, more of these figures to be drawn and brought into um, youth studies. So. You know, there's a whole lot of different cultural constructions of youth, and there's certainly a whole lot of different contours of inequality that will um, affect the way that the figures of youth are drawn and how they're used. Um, so, and I think this also speaks to wider issues in terms of how youth um, itself is seen as a figure of transition, and maybe youth studies and the findings of youth studies um, are starting to even threaten that figure as that kind of notion of transition elongates, as um, I've discussed in previous weeks. So we need to kind of think about our own very own object of study here. If youth studies, very notion of its object of study, youth, is not necessarily meaning the same thing anymore, maybe we need to redefine it. Um, and this will kind of speak to some of the key issues in the field as well. Okay, that's all. Thank you.